Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we are making a soap based off of your all's suggestions. Uh, when I made my freedom bars with the red and white uh, stripes and then the blue swirl and I love that soap design and I said at the end of the video that I really wanted suggestions to do that design framework with other color suggestions and I got a lot of feedback saying do a Halloween or a harvest type soap. And so that's what we're doing today. The fragrance that I'm gonna use is gonna be Wild Current and Sandalwood. This is from Wholesale Supplies Plus. It soaps beautifully. Scent retention is excellent. Um, it's such a fabulous scent. Okay, for the colors, we're gonna do on day one, because it's a two-day process, I have to pour the layers on day one, unmold it, cut it on the diagonal, and then on day two, we do a swirl to fill up the gap. Um, so day one, we're gonna do green and orange stripes which I think are beautiful combination. And then on day two, we're gonna do Cheshire Cat Purple Mica from Nurture Soap. This is gorgeous. If you've never tried this purple, oh my word, you'll see, it's beautiful. Soap's great too. So it's kind of a Halloween harvest inspired all in one. I just think these colors are gonna look fabulous together. I think these colors are gonna be so cool. Okay, so we talked about the fragrance. We talked about the colors. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do on top. I might do some piping on there and um, see how I wanna do the colors. I'm still thinking about it. I'm gonna wait to get those stripes poured. It'll come to me. You'll come along with me and see what we end up with. But uh, so let me get everything pulled together and let's come back for day one of this Halloween inspired soap. Okay, we are back and I had a little battery issue. So let me catch you up to speed here. A little prep work is done. What's over here is my oils and butters that have kale and clay and colloidal oats and the fragrance already in here split into six equal portions. And then right here, I have my lye solution, which does have tussa silk fibers, cane sugar and sodium lactate divided up into six equal portions and I'm gonna blend these one at a time to do layers in my Essential Depot standard size soap mold. This thing is a workhorse, I love this. Um, and for the design color, so I talked about the orange and the green, sorry, the orange and the green that are going down. I'm gonna go ahead and mica up the oils here before we even get to blending because that makes it super easy. But I wanna do a little mica line in between. So I have this teeny little strainer and I'm gonna be using my Blackberry, my Blackberry Mica from Nurture Soap. This is such a gorgeous eggplant purple. I love it. I, you, it's really hard to probably discern the color here, but I just wanna do a dusting between each layer to kind of pull in the purple swirl that we're gonna to do tomorrow when we make the soap, cut it on the angle. And I just thought this would add a little something to it because I was thinking of names for this soap being kind of the Halloweenish type theme. Um, and I wanna call this soap Sleepy Hollow. And I thought this would just add a little something. So that's the game plan. So right now, let me scoop my lye off to the side. You just wanna be careful when you have lye sitting out on your work surface. Always be cautious. And now I'm gonna go ahead and blend my orange and green mica into each of these oil buckets before we get to the layers. And I'll probably just fast forward through all of this. <laughs> Sorry about the um, additives phase of this. I had it in one big container, added all my additives in and then split it up equally. Um, so anyway, let's get these colored up and get them poured into the layers for our first, you know, day one of this soap today.
next day. Let's get this unmolded and cut on the diagonal and then we will get to our second step in this soap making. Now we've got our wedges here. I love how the lines came out with that little bit of mica dust in there. I am so happy with how these came out. Looks like they're pretty straight. And so now just gotta fit these back into the mold. Get them pressed down and uh, we will get to our next color, which is the purple in the pot swirl. are back. Here is the other half of our oils with all the additives and fragrance in. Here is our lye solution. And because I made this yesterday, I'm going to strain it through my strainer. It has a little bit of lye lint. Not a big deal, but let's get it in here. Boy, this fragrance smells really good and it is behaving like a dream in soap. Highly recommend. And there's that bright yellow uh, morph that it does, the fragrance reacting with the lye, but it bounces back. It does not stay this very um, not so pretty color. <laughs> it is, well, it's kind of mustard color, I don't know, but it won't stay that color. Okay, that looks like olive green mud. Trust me, it's gonna bounce back. <laughs> this is not a pretty color morph, but it is kind of funny. the next day and I am very happy to report <laughs> that that horrible color has bounced back but it does have a little soda ash so what we're gonna do right now is steam up these tops and hopefully brighten it up and pick up some of the color it's really interesting um, that was just one of the most hideous color morphs I've ever seen uh, but look how bright the uh, light color came and that that purple that was that terrible muddy brown anyway I'm gonna be using my new steamer here. I love this steamer. It has a little bit more um, power. It shoots the steam out a little harder and it doesn't drip as much as my old one. So I'm loving this clothing steamer. I will leave it in the link down below. And uh, let's get to steaming these tops before we can get in here. It just has a little power button. You push it and it kicks out steam right away. It's so awesome. And then you just run it up and down your soap slowly until you see the soda ash sort of melt away and brighten your soap up. And of course, depending on how thick your soda ash is, it will go quicker or take longer, just depending. So there is a steamed soap versus an unsteamed soap. back it's been about an hour since I steamed these they are dry to the touch but they do have a little bit of gloss on top and it brightened up those colors now this is an interesting thing 
So you can definitely see the purple and the white came out white, but there's still some of that muddy gray. And I'm wondering as this continues to get surface air circulation, if that will change. And um, of course we won't know what the inside looks till I stop talking and get cutting in here. But um, I just think this color morph is fascinating. I love it. And I actually think that little gray swirl looks pretty, but Let's get these out of the mold and get them cut. I am going to turn these standard size bars into tall skinny bars, so I will have lots of samples. So I have my slab cutter here. I'll run these through and then we'll get to cutting and more talking. So let's get these out of the mold. So we had a little bit of seepage and that is fine, very easy to clean that up, so no big deal on that. back with the lovely Olga and my little handy dandy beveler box with a blade. So this comes in really handy when you need to clean up the side of a bar, but I will say this blade is very sharp. I got this on Amazon. It's very inexpensive, but you really want to be careful. And you could even wear some of those like cut proof gloves. I think butchers wear them or <laughs> anyway, be very cautious. That blade is nothing to mess around with, but we'll be implementing that to clean up because we have a little bit of seepage and my little uh, box there makes it easy to clean up. So now let's get in here and see how that purple swirl came out on the inside. And I tell you what, this was such a well-behaved soap. I really was tickled with this fragrance. All right, so let's get in here. Um, yeah, this fragrance behaves so nicely and it smells fabulous today. Um, but it's, you know, it was kind of a slow mover. And yesterday when I came in to do my purple swirl here, my soap was very cool. And look at that, it got a little muddied up. I didn't get some definite swirls because it was so fluid. And one thing that I forgot to factor in as I was making the soap was how cool my oils were. And so um, I should have blended a little bit longer and it's kind of muddied up, but I actually think with the Sleepy Hollow, that looks a little mysterious. I kind of like it with the theme of this soap. So this fragrance, was interesting that color morph the fact that it was slow moving um but it smells great so i would give this fragrance a thumbs up from me because of those things even the color morph which i found very entertaining <laughs> so that's a plus for me because it bounced back no issues look how beautiful these colors came out the white is very bright in here so i i think that the color morph is a uh, it's kind of fun i actually enjoyed it it cracks me up so I get asked a lot, what temperature do I like to soap at? And this is a good uh, conversation to have since I soaped a little bit cool. My studio is in my basement, which is partially underground. I have a walkout basement. So it stays, the ambient temperature in my basement is on the cool side. I tend to like cooler houses anyway. So it's about 68 year round, pretty much. In the winter, it gets a little bit cooler, but um. So my oils and lye had been sitting out at that temperature and they were probably about 68 to 70 degrees when I blended this. And it soaps perfectly, but you might need to blend a little bit longer. Um, and that's the only thing with soaping cool. I have not found, at, well, let me back up. So when you're soaping at cooler temperatures, this, the oils can be a little thicker because it's cold and things like that, uh, you could get a false trace. So you wanna be careful of that. And I was absolutely positive that I didn't have a false trace on this, which is great, but uh, it takes a little longer blending time. 
when you're working with cooler to cold oils. When I first started soaping, everything I read said 110, 120 degrees to soap at, which is great, but um, it's not necessary. I actually prefer soaping around 80 degrees is my very favorite temperature to soap at. Let's get into my next loaf, and this one did have some seepage, so I will show you how I use my little box to clean these up. But yeah, so soap temperatures, it's one of those things where um, I don't think it's a hill to die on. I think you have a, uh, some flexible room, and again, your recipe and soaping style, all those things will factor in. But um, yeah, I tend to like to soap cool, but it's something to note. All right, well, even though this is sort of more swirly than I was thinking, I think it looks cool. It's kind of mysterious, I'm ghosty looking, I don't know. <laughs> Sleepy Hollow, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm very happy with how these came out. And again, I love how the mica lines came out. It just sort of accentuates the lines. I think it's awesome. Let me grab one of these, okay. So this one has a little seepage on the bottom. I'm going to pull my little box over here and let's see anything on the side no. So So again just be careful of the blade and you put it down and just give it a quick swipe through and look at that it's perfectly clean. So these come in very handy for any messy bars that you may have. Ooh, that's a cool swirl. These were fun to make. I just, I love fall time. I love getting ready for all of that, the leaves changing, and this soap kind of gave me the fall vibes. Yeah, but this two day process, the pouring the lines, it just takes some patience, it's a little pesky, but I love the design and uh, I'm so glad I did it. And thank you all so much for all of your suggestions. Um, yeah, this soap design is fun and you could do it with, so I have several other suggestions that I may do in the future. Um, I had some for black and white and teal. Uh, just, you all are very creative and I thank you for the, you know, the inspiration and the ideas. I am going to get the rest of these tidied up and cleaned up and let them sit for a few hours before we come in to bevel and stamp and all the soapy goodness that goes on down in the studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a wonderful day.